Well, you know, I think for uh, all of us involved in the digital world, um, the incredible progression of low-cost handheld computing devices, which has been, you know, foreseen for many years, but it's still amazing seeing it happen, um, uh, has been Im impressive and is continuing. And so, uh, <clears throat> you know, we'll see um, sub-$100 uh, great um, tablet and phone experiences, you know, in, in the next couple of years, and then it will just continue to either get uh, more incredible, um, so bigger screen, uh, more pixels, higher bandwidth, or less expensive, or something. And you'll have some choices there. And then everyone in, in our worlds are now trying to think about, okay, smartphones, tired, yeah, yeah, done that, whatever. Uh, what's wearable computing? You know, uh, how will the Nike fuel band change things? How will Google Glass type interactions and, uh, change things? How will, you know, pervasive cameras, uh, you know, and, um, and co connectivity change things? And so there's a a whole second level of digital explosion that people are trying to think through about uh, measured self and, and um, that the technology is, is five or ten years from being mainstream, but it will be there. Uh, and so that's, uh, you know, taking a lot of time, I would say. Um, and then on the personalized, the, there's a double-edged sword in personalization. So one is, uh, we can pick content, uh, whether that's news stories or entertainment content that the user is highly likely to find relevant and interesting. And so on a, on a short-term basis, that's great for the user. You know, much more relevant, they check it, they like it. The danger is balkanization. And, and um, society uh, has gained somewhat from the homogenizing influence of CBS to, say, all of the U.S. Okay, or uh, certain events or sports that are really bring people together. And so, um, you know, the yin and the yang here around personalization will be what it, in this future where everything is hyper-targeted uh, and highly relevant to each individual, does it just reinforce um, polarization in the world and society um, and not make you confront alternative views? So, you know, all technologies, I mean, the automobile has pluses and negatives. Uh, the internet has pluses and negatives, and personalization has pluses and negatives. And yeah. it's up to all of us to figure out, you know, how to harness the positives and mitigate, you know, the downsides. And, and no technology, you know, doesn't have a balance of those. So I think we're all just figuring that out. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with um, the importance of keeping an eye on that balkanization, that sort of the silos. I mean, I think for the next uh, group that you have, you should you should send a car up and pick up uh, Peter Keckley and Eli Pariser at uh, Upworthy. Um, Eli wrote a book called The Filter Bubble, which is required reading if you're trying to think about this um, uh, issue uh, in any depth. And it, it really is quite... Um, Scary. It's the sort of the, the digital analog of people moving into gated communities and you know sending their kids to the same schools and expecting us to all get along, and uh, it's, it's just not the case. Um, it's it's one of my biggest concerns about this, and sort of one of the things I seek to do in this work is really try to figure out ways that we can uh, e expose people to new ideas and, and facilitate that kind of debate online. Um, but the other reason I want to bring up Upworthy uh, is just as we're looking at technology, and this gets a little bit away from your your question, but it's just an important point I want to leave with it, uh, to make sure I make. Don't just focus on the future technology, focus on your utilization of existing technology. For example, no one at the State Department uses email at any large scale. We skipped over that and we went straight to Facebook pages in terms of our digital programs. Um, email still uh, the most important way we uh, connect with large audiences. I mean, I know Netflix prompts me to watch things from my email inbox. I don't wake up and say, I'm going to go to Netflix.com and see what I want to watch. One of the reasons I watch stuff is I get that email at the exact right time, personalized the things I want in a place where I already am. I know the campaign in 08 and 12 drove a lot of fundraising and organizing through email lists. And I know media companies like the Politico Playbook email that you're probably all subscribed to you know, that moves conversations. What is your version of that? And is email just one example of existing technology channels you're not fully exploiting? It's certainly something the State Department we're taking a hard look at.